Alex here with a high conflict child custody video on boundaries. I have a couple of examples of what I'm going to talk about in this video. Um, maybe even, I might even go into a third. So basically these are my experiences and the only reason I'm bringing them up is because I'm seeing people with a lot of similar experiences that don't know what to do. Um, the first one is um, stealing your child's clothes. That happened to me and now I'm starting to see a few other people who are going through that too and how to deal with that. In my um, custody case from the very beginning, we we did not join custody right off the bat, but we had it within the first year. And one of the ways that my ex would get back to me is when I'd send my son over to her house with some clothes, she would just keep it or throw it away. All I know is I wouldn't get it back. So well into the dispute, I wish I could remember exactly when, I decided that I was only going to allow him to go over with the clothes on his back. And then she, of course, would send him to me with the clothes in his back. And we would have our own um, wardrobes for him in our own respective homes. I, I can't remember. I, I really wish I could remember this far back. I can't remember if she made a big deal out of that and tried to bring it up in court. I imagine she did. I just don't remember it being something that was in a motion. Um, it may have been in a contempt motion. And then the court may have ordered, you guys just each keep your own separate clothes. But I do know that later on, when my judge recused himself and my second judge um, took over the case, she wanted to go back to us sharing clothing because she thought that that would be a great way to learn how to cooperate. This new judge thought that she had it all figured out. Well, no, clothes started getting stolen right away. It didn't even take a single visit. The very first visit that I sent a batch of clothes, she kept it all. And then she she wouldn't even really send any of her own clothes. She would just send up back parts of mine. So if I like sent like like seven sets, she'd send back like two shorts, a pair of sh uh, uh, a shirt, um, th maybe two or three pairs of socks. So like more than half of it was just not given back to us. And I figured she was going to have some some kind of excuse set up. I don't know what it was, but it never ended up coming to a really big battle because I um, just started to keep track of the clothes she was keeping. And after like three or four examples, I filed a motion with the court to throw her in jail. And the um, she never opposed it. And then when I saw that my ex hadn't opposed it and she had been pretty much gone for like three or four months, I just told the court, you know, if you want, just put the order back to the way it was and I'm fine. And the court did that. And so... I ended up doing what I was doing before, only, well, I, I ended up to the point where I was before with the first judge, but I, ne I never ended up having to actually um, go back to keeping our own clothes again because, remember I said she was gone for three or four months, um, she just never came back, and two months later, I filed a petition to terminate her parental rights. But the moral of this long story is, if the court is making you do something and your ex is taking advantage of it, you have to, you'll have to take action. Like, it's so easy for somebody to just say, well, you know, my judge just doesn't like me, or my judge just wants to make this work, and just go on for years and years and years just getting taken advantage of the whole time. I know that that is what a lot of people want to do because they're scared of going back, they're scared of the court system, they're not sure what their judge is going to do. But you have to deal with it in the end. You can't, I mean... This stuff causes breakups and divorces. Like, your new wife or, or partner is going to look at that, and they're going to get pissed off. Like, you're going, you know, every couple of weeks, and she's stealing clothes, and you have to buy more every, you know, every month you're buying more. You know, you have to eventually, I mean, even if you're not with somebody new, you have to put your foot down at some point. And you have to be willing to appeal if it's that bad. And that, to me, honestly, is bad. Um, so, yeah, the moral is, you know... If you have, I mean, look at how I handled it. In my first case, I had the first judge, told him what was going on, got the order for us to keep our own clothes, got a new judge, she didn't have a clue, and what did I do? Did I, you know, throw, you know, throw a fit in the courtroom? No. I said, all right, I'm just going to prove it to you after. The judge ordered it, my ex started stealing clothes again, and I went ahead and I, you know, I proved it. I did it a few ways, I took pictures of what was in the, in the bags, made sure I had a third party come with me to drop the bag off because those witnesses are way better. And I also kept a little inventory sheet inside of there that listed all of the items that I was sending to her. And on the right side, I put a place for her to put her reason for keeping anything. Because I was concerned that she was going to try to say something was too small or too large. And um, she ended up not filling any of that out, which meant she wouldn't have been able to use that excuse at a hearing, which is, if you watched my previous video, a great way to cut off an excuse, a potential excuse. Um, I'm not going to go back into that topic, though. Do watch that video. It's a good video. 
So my um, second example was um, after I had primary physical custody, one of the um, controls that my ex wanted to exercise, actually two of them, um, the first one is she wanted to put stuff in his room. So like she sent like a calendar to put in his room and all of this other stuff. And it's like, I'm just going to tell people right now. And I have seen other people tell me, yeah, my ex wants me to put all these things in the room. It's your home. The home is in your house. Your kid is in your home, in your house, in their room. Don't let your ex put stuff in there. Don't let them force you to do it. You know, it's one thing if your kid comes home with something new and wants to put it in there. That's fine. But I mean, to send to send me a message and say, I demand you put this in his room and take a picture of it so I know it's there. And it was just, it, it didn't even have anything about her on it. It was just a calendar. And other stuff like that, I was just like, this is going way too far. You're not crossing this boundary. He's going to put in his room what he wants in his room or what we want to put in there. You know, and in your home, you can put whatever you want in this room. I'm not going to tell you that you need to put a portrait of me in there or a book that I bought him. You know, don't try to control each other's homes. Don't let them control your home. The court's not going to allow them to, to, them to do that. You have nothing to fear there. In fact, that sounds weird. So, I mean, if somebody went to court and said, I want you to order, you know, my ex to put this in the in the kid's room and take a picture of it so I know it's there. I mean, that's just weird. Uh, the other thing was trying to do his homework over the phone. I don't know what that was about. So I had primary physical custody. She was seeing him every other weekend. No, this was actually when she was a whole eight hours away, eight hour road trip away. She wanted to call him and do his homework with him on the phone. You know, this is obviously a token effort. She lost custody and she was trying to do all kinds of weird things to get it back. Quotation marks there on purpose. You don't get custody back like that. Anyway, um, I, I was like, you know, in, your, in what you're trying to do, you're not realizing just how hard you're making it on him to do his homework. You know, he, you can't see the paper. You're not sitting there. You know, and if you wanted to, the other thing is, if you want to do his homework, why were you not taking him to school all those times? I mean, the whole part of the reason why she lost custody is she wasn't taking him to school. And so now all of a sudden, she's eight hours away in another city, and all of a sudden she wants to do his homework over the phone every day. You know, and spend hours, you know, no. I, I was like, make a big deal out of that if you want, but the whole thing about primary physical custody is, this is where he primarily lives, this is where he's going to do his homework. It's that simple. So that was another example of uh, trying to cross a boundary. Um, the third thing that I was thinking about talking about, I'm not going to really cover in depth, but I will talk about it a little bit because I have seen other people have this issue too. Phones. So my ex bought our son a phone when he was like eight or nine years old. And I, I said, I'm not consenting to this. And I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to allow it. If he comes over here with a phone, I'm going to hold on to it. He's not going to be able to use it. And then when he's ready to go back, then I'll put the phone, you know, back in his pocket and he can have it when he gets back to you. And I was like, if you want to make a big deal about out of it, go to court because he's way too young and he's going to lose it. And when he loses it, you're going to blame me and want me to pay for it. I already know where this is going. I told her all of this. Of course, I didn't say it in that way. I said it using the bare minimum factual information, but all the contents of what I said were there. And she made a big deal out of it and went to court. And I told the court exactly what I just said to you guys just now. And the court agreed with me. The court said, <clears throat> um, he's too young to have a phone. You can call, you know. She could call my phone, and I can always give her my phone to talk to you. He doesn't need a phone, and if he loses it, you're fully responsible for it. And I was like, that's all I want, Your Honor. And the other thing is, um, a few extra things that I wanted included there is this is a phone that anyone can call him on. I mean, it's not something that you can just only use. And then the other thing was um, that we can control access to it. You know, it's not something where he's just going to be able to carry all the time. And she didn't like that, but the court ordered all of what I wanted. You know, if he's in our own... We control the phone. He's not 15 years old. You know, he's nine. Um, and she, of course, didn't follow that. She actually told him to take in his backpack to school and all kinds of other crazy stuff. We found this out later. Luckily, because we had access to the phone, he never actually took it to school. Um, so in the end, he did lose the phone. And even though the court ordered she would have to pay the whole amount, what does a high conflict child custody ex do? Sends us a message saying, I expect you to pay for that phone that he lost. This is what you have to deal with when you're in a high-conflict child custody case. Even when you do everything right, they still say the most inane things. Um, anyway, of course, I refused, and there's nothing she could do about it because it was in a court order in writing stating, if your phone is lost, you have to pay for the whole thing. And so she hated that, but she had to do that. I don't actually think she bought him another phone after that. Um, no, she didn't. That was very shortly thereafter, probably a few months, three or four, 
I'm trying to remember when that happened. Anyway, very shortly thereafter, it wasn't even a full year, uh, her parental rights were terminated, and that was that. So, um, yeah, uh, keep your boundaries up. Um, don't, oh, <laughs> another thing. Um, sometimes an ex will try to take advantage of an oral pronouncement from the court. So it's not in a court order, but it's a comment that the court has made. And that's one of the things that she tried to do all of the time. But one of the biggest examples that I remember is um, um, the courts, during the clothing argument about who should have the clothing, the court said, you know, you guys should be able to work this out. He has, whatever is his, is his in both of your homes, not just in one of your homes. And so the court was just speaking in an abstract sense. Well, shortly, a few weeks later, my ex said, I heard Army has a laptop. I want him to come with it. And I'm like, Army doesn't have a laptop. I let him use my laptop, but he doesn't have one. And then, of course, she went back and forth for a while, wanting that laptop. Now, why did she want the laptop? Because she wants to piss us off. She was, just gonna, she was probably just going to keep it and never send it back, just like the clothes. Um, anyway, of course, I refused. I said, well, you know, I didn't want to really bring it to a court battle. So I didn't want to just say, yeah, it's his and you're not going to have it. The truth was it wasn't his. Um, so the truth was, no, it's not his, it's mine. And so he's not going to be going over there with it. And in the back of my mind, I was like, if she brings it up to court, I highly doubt the court is expecting us to share $1,000 electronics. You know, it's one thing to share clothing and have it be stolen and lost. It's another thing for your ex to be empowered with the, uh, you know, the ability to take a, a laptop, an expensive, um, you know, electronic and just keep it. Um, for some reason, something else popped into my head with regards to the laptop, but now I can't remember. So I think at this point I'm going to go ahead and end this. Oh, it was somebody else having the same issue as me. And I wish I could remember the specifics as to what they were going through. But um, it was, ah, yeah, I remember now. Um, this is not me. This is another person. They had a like a fishing pole that they bought for their child, and their their opponent said, "Hey, can he bring the fishing pole over so we can take him fishing?" And um, she sent it over with the child, and never came back. And after several messages, she um, he finally said, "You know what? I'm only going to send it back if you promise to send it back again." It's like these high conflict child custody exes have the audacity to like make requirements like that. It's like I'm only going to give you your property back if you promise me that I can use it again. It's so messed up. Anyway, if anyone else has examples like these, post it in the comments below. I'm sure people would like to uh, see that they're not the only one that's going through that. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and end this video.